It's your brother and servant, Ras Michael Ra'a, first directing all our honor and praise unto the God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, for the Lord our God is one, for we honor, revere, glorify, and worship the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who have been revealed in complete core quality upon the throne of King David, as we testify that the Lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to conquer revelations and to loosen the seven seals thereof, that we may appropriate the whole of his word from Genesis to Revelation. So we thank God that he helps us prove fruitful as truly being children of his revelation, who have received of his salvation and have full hope and faith in his glory. So we give glory to word, glory to life, glory to life, glory to grace and truth, all which we have received through Jesus Christ, who has appeared to us a second time, apart from sin, for salvation. And we declare our faith in his virgin birth, in his baptism, in his death, his resurrection, and his ascension, and his second coming in the new name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I. So we give thanks and praise unto the Most High Jah for giving us this victory, that we may praise his name and that we may testify of his glory and that we may take the steps that bring us into the kingdom of heaven. You know, these should be important issues for us and things that we consider knowing the proper steps in which we should follow to receive this kingdom. You see here what we have here is our banner of truth, which declares unto us our kingdom, which we receive through the blood of Jesus Christ, which reveals Jesus Christ upon the throne of King David, just as he has been revealed upon the thrones of our hearts. And this reveals the glorious completion of the new earth, which we are promised and which we know and which we have faith and hope in, knowing that faith is the evidence of things not seen and the substance of things hoped for. So we have full faith and full hope in the glorious completion of all things, for he has truly proved and truly shown that the line of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to loosen those seven seals. So we want to be conscious of the steps and the ladder that we climb to be found in the grace of Jesus Christ and to be found uh, within his kingdom. And it's important that, that we have an understanding of all of the, the things that translate, uh, that translate into uh, Jesus being our true king. And when he's our true king, that means that we truly are citizens within his kingdom. So uh, we want to we wanna go back to uh, Matthew chapter 5. And Matthew chapter 5 is, is, is really important because it's, it's, the, it's the foundation of the good news. It's the foundation and it's the, it's the be attitudes. Those are the attitudes that we should be. We should be these, these specific nine, nine blessings that, that Christ testifies of. We, we should be uh, constantly affirming uh, our faith in him by being in submission and, and, and seeking to, to, to truly attain to these uh, nine blessings that Christ testifies of here, uh, which are known as uh, the Beatitudes. And, and, and these things testify of the, the ethics and the, and the daily living that is translated from uh, Jesus being our King. So let's go. Uh, well, first, what we want to do is, as we always do, let's take the words of his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I, who we know to be the core quality of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, he who no man can see nor has seen, but has been revealed, mirrored, and personified through the grace of the Holy Spirit in that mortal man, Tafari Makoni, as the Almighty. So, so, so we wish to, to take his word within our lips, and we wish to have it uh, help edify our, our, our state and our nature as truly being children of his revelation. And uh, we find here uh, words that uh, truly confirm this by his imperial majesty when he says that this age above all ages is a period in history when it should be our prime duty to preach the gospel of grace to all our fellow men and women. The love shown in Christ by our God, by our God to mankind should constrain all of us who are followers and disciples of Christ to do all in our power to see through it that the message of salvation is carried to those of our fellows for, the, for whom Christ our Savior was crucified, but who 
have not had the benefit of hearing the good news. So this is our responsibility. We have such a good news to testify of because we have the rest of the story. We have the we have the full story. We have the other half that has never been told. Many are, are fully aware of that salvation in Jesus Christ. But are they conscious of his revelation and his wishing to be revealed upon the thrones of their hearts? And in his wish to be revealed upon the thrones of their hearts, he has he is he is he has edified this on earth. Remember, what you bind on earth is also bound in heaven. So what Christ did is he binded his, his revelation on earth so they could be bound in heaven. And heaven, as we know, as we find in Luke uh, chapter 17, verse 21, the kingdom of heaven is within you and I. So when he wanted to bind that salvation on earth, what did he have to do? He had to come and shed his blood on earth so that they could be bound in heaven. And just as he wishes to, 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 to come and bring his revelation, he has to bind his revelation on earth so that it can be revealed in heaven. Like I mentioned before, Luke chapter 17 verse 21 testifies that the kingdom of heaven is within us. So, so he, had to, he had to bind this on earth as he is in heaven. And so many of us are missing out on this second half and, and, and the full story that has never been told. And this is our responsibility in Rastafari. And this is what his imperial majesty testifies of when he says that, 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 that we being disciples of Christ to do, all our, to do all in our power to see to it that the message of salvation is carried to those of our fellows for whom Christ our Savior was crucified, was, well, I'm sorry, was sacrificed. So Christ was sacrificed for this very purpose that you could receive his salvation and his revelation and his glory. And so many are stuck in, this, in, in his salvation which 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 is which is which is a blessed thing to be stuck in but in this age this is a specific age this age requires uh and his imperial majesty testifies of this too let's read because this age requires a sense of peace and 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 uh and, and prosperity spiritual prosperity which can only be uh begotten through the revelation of Jesus Christ and this is why it's important for all those who are, have faith in his blood to be aware of his revelation upon the thrones of your heart, just as he has been revealed upon the throne of King David in the new name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I. So his imperial majesty gives us a great confirmation on this when he says that peace, universally heralded by the angels at the birth of our Savior, has become even more necessary to mankind than ever before. The alternative... The alternatives confronting the governments of today are no longer peace or war, but peace or annihilation and complete doom of mankind. Therefore, it has now become the noble responsibility of Christians and people of other faith and their leaders throughout the world to pray. You hear that? To pray and to work hard for the preservation of world peace. So we have to preserve and work hard for the preservation of world peace. And just as, just as he mentions here that we also have to pray, we have to work for the preservation of world peace. So with us receiving such a comfort through the Holy Spirit, we have to work for, 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 for sharing that comfort. And we share that comfort in giving the whole of the story. We share that comfort by testifying of the grace of the Holy Spirit revealing unto us Christ as our true king upon the thrones of our hearts. Just as he has been revealed upon the throne of King David as that conquering lion who has revealed and broken the seven seals. He broke the seven seals of revelations, and he has broke the seven seals within man. For we know that man has, has, has seven roots within himself, seven seals, seven chakras, as it is known within the, within the, uh, in the, in the Eastern, uh, Eastern traditions. Uh, those, those, those seven seals also correlate to the seven seals of revelation. So he has broken those seven seals within us when he set upon the throne of our heart. And that's what we want for other Christians, to receive him upon the thrones of their heart, that he may break those seven seals and that he may loose your, 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 your full salvation within you, that you may truly have the core quality of your body, your spirit, and your soul. You may have the fruits of eternal life now, today, and not tomorrow, but now, this second, this very hour. So let's go to the Beatitudes, and we want to look at uh, verse 4 this time. We covered verse 3, which is the first blessing. And remember, these, these Beatitudes are like steps into heaven. We have nine steps. Imagine if you try to skip a step on a ladder. <laughs> that could that 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 could that could really be detrimental to your health 
skipping a step on a ladder. As you attempt to climb up, you want to skip a step. No, sir. Don't skip a step. That first step was what? Blessed are the poor in spirit. So remember, when we were poor in spirit, that means that we were seeking the means. We were, we were constantly seeking the means that we could be preserved in spirit. Just as a poor person would seek the means of, of, of food and comfort, for that's what he lacks. What we lack is the ability to provide for ourselves spiritually. We lack that ability. So the only thing that we can do is depend wholly on Jesus Christ. And in our dependence upon him, we receive, we receive all, of our, all of our salvation. What we lack is the ability to preserve ourself in spirit. So at all times, we have to constantly depend and head rest on Christ. And when we head rest on Christ, he gives us these specific nine edifications, nine steps, nine rungs upon the ladder, which we are to climb upon. And this, and, and this, and this first step is, is blessed are the poor in spirit, being, being, being constantly seeking the necessities to provide for your spirit. Constantly seeking these things. A person who, who is rich in spirit, they're not seeking these things. They got it already. Oh, I go to this church and I do this and that and the blah, 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 blah. You don't need all those things. You don't have to depend and head rest on Christ, on his salvation, his revelation, and his glory. You're rich. You don't, you, don't, you don't need all these things. But for I and I, for those truly true disciples of Christ, we need his revelation. We need his glory just as much as we needed his salvation. We need his fullness. We need that full salvation. And this, and that's what we find here in the Beatitudes. It gives us an understanding of the steps in which we must follow to truly be received as uh, citizens of His kingdom. To truly be received as as uh, 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 truly understanding the implications of Christ being the King in our life. And that's what these Beatitudes are. They express the implications of Christ being the King within our life. So, so here we are, like I said, we want to get to that, to that second step. The first step was blessed to the poor in spirit. Our second step that we're going to go on to when we're climbing this nine-step ladder is blessed are those who mourn. For they shall be comforted. And this is so important for us, brothers and sisters. We have to constantly, through the closeness to his throne, do you realize how close we stand to his throne? With him being seated upon the thrones of our hearts, how close are we to his throne, brothers and sisters? We are so close to his throne. Be so, being so close, we have to supplicate. We have to intercede. And we have to pray for people. We have to constantly and continually be in a state of perpetual mourning. A mourning over the fallen state of man. And when you mourn over men, you, you begin to have mercy for them. You begin to have a different sense of mercy because at that point you recognize the works of the enemy. You, work and you recognize our fallen state. You recognize where we are now compared to where we should be. And you recognize that Christ... Christ has come to give us this victory and that upon that cross, upon that tree of the cross, he stretched himself in passion to the left and to the right in between, in, in, in between, in between those, uh, that one good witness and that one wicked witness. He stretched himself in between the two of them. And, and this, this has to be our understanding of the way in which we seek to serve the brethren. We have to stretch our arms in both directions. In both directions, brothers and sisters, in both directions, because he reigns on the just and the unjust, and he charges all with his love. So in that same nature, we have to be willing to, to recognize how blessed we are in mourning. And, and that has to be a revelation of our, 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 our citizenship within the kingdom, because that's just what Christ did. He, if you could find one place in the scriptures that testify of Christ smiling and laughing, please, please inbox me and let me know. Please let me know, because we, we, you'll never hear uh, of the man of sorrows. And he is a man of sorrows. He, he's, he's a man of sorrows for good reason, because he took on our grief. He took on our fallen state, and he recognized our weakness, and he recognized our inability, and he recognized all our shortcomings. And what did he do? He sacrificed himself for us. He knew beforehand that we would be incapable of properly upholding all those things that are necessary for our salvation. And he did that for us. He is that man of sorrow. And he was sorrowful when he when he witnessed such 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 a such a such a true image of his father, such a true image of his Elohim, such a true image 
have fallen in such a nature like we have being mankind. We have truly fallen. But it, it, is, it, is, it, it is him being a, a true uh, king and truly mourning over, his, over, over, over the loss of those citizens, which he is now calling back into his kingdom. And this has to be our glory. This has to be our joy. This has to be something that we're just perpetually happy about. And we're, 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 we're perpetually um, brought close unto his throne. And being brought close unto his throne, we receive of his spirit. We receive of his nature. And that's what we see here in these Beatitudes. Each step brings us closer to his nature, which, which, which truly shows us uh, being recipients of all the implications that show that Christ is your king. And that's what we find in these Beatitudes. And that's what we find in step two, which is blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And we know who the comforter is, right? The comforter is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was sent unto us after Christ ascended into the heavens. He ascended into the heavens. That's us having faith in his ascension. He ascended into the heavens and sit at the right hand of the Father. And in his second advent, he has come with clouds. He has come in a higher consciousness, brothers and sisters. He has come in clouds. So in him coming in clouds, now he abides and is prepared to be revealed within mortal man, within mankind, through the grace of the Holy Spirit. And this is, this is our joy, this is our blessing, which we wish to proclaim to all. So I pray that all of the eye, we search over these nine steps and we seek to bring ourselves in unison with these nine steps. Remember, as, as we see here in, 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 in verse 1 of chapter 5, and seeing the multitude, he went up a mountain. And when he was, when he, when he was seated, his disciples came unto him. That has to be our nature. We have to follow him up that mountain. And where has he went? He has, he has gone up the mountain, and we have followed his direction. And where has he sat? Upon the throne of King David, just as he has sat upon the throne of our heart. So, so if anyone has a problem with that, that's on them. But we have to testify in truth of Christ. We have to testify of his salvation, his revelation, and his glory, okay? Glory to the Most High, Jah, Rastafari, and all the citizens of his kingdom, and all those who have found their, their, their affirmation of truly being children of his revelation in these nine steps that truly show us that we are really children of the kingdom. Rastafari, praise Jah, Selassie.